My guests at this time, uh, first of all, are the author of the new autobiography, Lance by Chance, Wrestling as a Von Erich, and the subject of that book, the man himself, Lance Von Erich. It is Lance. It is Vincent Berry. Guys, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me today. Uh, thanks for having us. No problem. Uh, well, I will start with uh, I will start with you, Vinny. We'll we'll start with you. How did you get involved with Lance? Why did you feel the need to write uh, Lance by Chance and tell his story here? Well, I've always found the story very interesting. I grew up in the the Dallas area, so uh, watching the wrestling program and seeing Lance come in and and how all that just kind of you know he was there for about a, a year and a half and uh, then he went away and the way Fritz handled things. I don't know. It's just very curious about that. And then as I got older, I got into writing. I have a website called wrestleville.com where I I write little stories on wrestlers and people in the business or coming up in the business and and uh i came across him doing this and wanted to write a story about him and the project turned out to be a lot bigger than than it was you know it started out to be an article for the website and it turned out to be a book man lance you you really do have such a, a crazy story man i'm i'm really looking forward to diving more into this uh for you what was the process like how did you enjoy getting to work with Vinny to to bring your story to the pages well you know a lot of people had asked me to uh write a book and i never wanted to and then Vinny approached me i think by the first time uh on facebook and said would you be interested in doing it i'm like no and then because i'm a very private person and then he goes well uh you know, if you ever want to tell your story, let me know. And then he wrote me a couple of times and you know what? I don't know why I like the guy. And, uh, I said, yeah, let's give it a shot. So, so why are you so sh- uh, Why do you not feel that your story needs to be told Lance? I mean, you're a really interesting guy right at the, the, cr- I mean, everybody obviously I think saw a piece of it in the dark side of the ring stuff, you know, where you're mentioned in there as kind of joining into the family, but you've got such a, a great story to tell, man. You had, such, you had such a cool career. Um, it was a short career in the States. Like uh, most people don't know, I went on to do some great things that I would have never done if uh, I hadn't been, you know, uh, introduced to the Von Erichs and that. I think that, that Kevin was, you know, he's always written, uh, I don't know, I, if you see anything that he's ever said about me, it's not very... Uh, you know, not very nice. And I think that the reason that is, is because he was upset that, you know, they thought they gave me a great break, you know, and it didn't turn out to be such a great break after all. It was a, you know, it was very, very difficult. And it's funny because a few months, a couple of months ago, um, Kevin had written uh, Vinny. And Vinny said, Kevin sent a, you know, an email to me. You should read it. And I'm like, I don't want to. He says, no, I think you should read it. And um well Vinny you can tell him what it said because well it basically uh he came out and said that hey I never really understood your uh side of things I I never uh put myself in your shoes and uh that you know I really appreciate everything that you did for uh our family and the company and nobody could have done what you did under the pressure that you were and that you know uh ho- hopefully someday that we could talk uh talk to each other and uh i wish you all the best so man that was that's paraphrasing it but that's basically what the letter said wow lance what did that mean to you once you heard that from kevin well you know i actually didn't really care that much uh in reality uh the, the thing is that that for me um you know i i've lived out of the states since i actually uh left world class in 87 you know so i but i live between i don't know if you see in the background between mexico where i am now and south africa so for me you know i i didn't really i didn't even look at any of the websites until just recently and uh uh you know many many years ago i did a couple of times and uh you know i just wasn't interested so actually it it, it was kind of neat in a way i guess but it wasn't something that i was you know, expecting or wanting. I just didn't want to hear any anything bad. You yeah. know, and I thought he might have written something else that was bad. Wow. So, no, it it was it was you know, it was nice that he you know, he had said that, but it wasn't it didn't change my life any. 
You seem to be living large, Lance. I mean, I hear like macaws and like monkeys in the background. You're down in Mexico. I did do a little research. Yeah, you have had a lot of business success outside of the wrestling business. Am I am I right about that? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, have. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's that's really great for you. Oh, but I mean, to, to get back to wrestling a little bit, like when do you recall them first coming to you? The, the, well, first of all, how did you fall in with the Von Erichs and how did you feel when you were asked to kind of take on that name because i believe it was fritz who asked you to take on the von eric name correct no no they, no it was david manning and uh okay. he actually had found me on a golf course and it was following me around and i actually thought he might have been gay i don't know he just was he didn't even when he came up to me he didn't even look at my face so much he was looking at my legs you know i just won a bodybuilding contest and so he said he, he was looking at my legs saying hey did you ever think about wrestling and i'm like <laughs> No, not really. And he says, well, come out to the sportatorium. We can make you a lot of money. You should come, you know, come out and see what it's all about. And that's what I did. And and I guess that's when you fell in with the Von Erichs. And so what was your relationship like? Because were you trained under the Von Erichs before you formally took on the name? What was your relationship like with the family before you became Lance Von Erich? Um, no, they they hired me to do a job. And, you know, I they didn't know if I was going to be Lance Von Erich or if I was just going to come to the territory and wrestle. And then eventually they decided, uh, you know, that uh, I would be a Von or possibly, most possibly, or probably be a Von Eric. So they actually uh, sent me to Portland uh, to learn. And I spent a few months out there and then came back to, to uh, uh, you know, and I wasn't really ready. Obviously, I was very ready for that spot, but they needed the help. You yeah, know, they had they were short for Von Erichs. Yeah, and and how did you feel about it? Did you have any reservations about taking on the name when they when they said we'd like to make you a, a Von Erich in the ring? Not really, but I thought it was going to be a, a lot of money. You know, I was making a lot of money before I actually got into the the business, and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, or what I was told. Okay. But I mean, like you still got to do some stuff. I know you wrestled Ric Flair for the NWA World Title. I mean, did you enjoy the run? I mean, I know there was some some blowback later on, especially you know when the whole thing about you being outed is not a Von Eric. But you still got to have a pretty good run in there, you know. Well, I did, you know, and the reason I left was because I wasn't making any money. Yeah, you know, I was working twice, you know, for two people actually, you know, because I was, you know, many many times I was wrestling, you know, twice a day. And uh, I just got worn out. And I went from having a great body to having a horrible body because, uh, you know, I couldn't train and I was hurt all the time. Yeah. And uh, so from that perspective, I mean, Vinny, back to you here. I mean, watching, you know, Lance's place in all this, like what did you learn about, you know, the, the Von Eric lineage and his, his place in the entire business? Was there anything that surprised you when you were researching Lance? Well, the, the one thing that really kind of surprised me was that, uh, you know, that he was brought in uh, by the Von Erichs, where I, I initially thought that he was an established wrestler named Ricky Vaughn up in Portland before uh, he came down and, and took on the Von Erich name. Uh, the biggest surprise for me was that he was basically made by Fritz, Fritz and David Manning. You know, he wasn't... Um, you know, they discovered him. They sent him to Portland. He learned how to wrestle. They brought him down here. Um, he was uh, a person that probably would have never, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation today um, had David Manning not met him on the golf course because he would have never uh, gotten into wrestling any other way. And you then, but yeah, you trained under Fritz von Erich, who like notoriously is kind of a tough cookie. What was it like for you to train under Fritz, uh, Lance? Well, I never trained under Fritz. He just hired me. I, it was, okay. the, it was, uh, and Kevin and Kerry didn't really train me. They came around a couple of minutes, you know, uh, three or four times. It was George Weingroff that trained me in, in, in Dallas. Um, and you know, uh, Chick Donovan and, you know, uh, uh, some of the Kelly Kaninsky. Of, huh? Kelly Kaninsky. Kelly Kaninsky was a big one. Yeah, I mean, they all, you know, thinking about it, there was a lot of them that had actually, you know, trained me. And they all said the same thing. Why? You know, I drove up to the Sportatorium in a, 
a new Jaguar when, you know, in those days, Jaguars was a, you know, a big thing. And they're like, why would you want to get into wrestling? <laughs> I'd like to make money. And they all looked at me like, <laughs> you know, and kind of laughed. And they never said anything because I guess they were afraid that Fritz might have gotten mad. But uh, <laughs> they all kind of shook their head in a, in a way that, you know, I, I didn't put it together then. I, I have since. You know, like, what the hell are you doing? So anyway, they didn't know I was going to be a Von Eric, though. So, so, so when did you? So when did it break for you? Like, when did it get to the point where you're like, I, I feel like I'm not making the money I expected. I feel like this isn't the right thing for me. Was there ever a moment that you remember? Where you're like, I just don't know that this is the business I thought that I was going to be getting into. I think I should move on to other things. Well, you know, my first paycheck was for about ten minutes, and it was a really, really big paycheck. And it just, I, I missed the. Um, what I think is I, you know, I kind of missed the time that they were doing really well. We, you know, every house that I went to that was, or every wrestling match that I went to that was a big ticket uh, seemed to be less and less and less. When we did the, you know, the in Dallas, um, the first time it was a huge, huge, huge audience. And then the second one, half of that, the third one, you know, uh, ha again, a half of that. And then the I think one of the last ones I had done was like, there was nobody in the stadium. You know, and the funny thing is when I went to South Africa, you know, when I quit, I actually went to South Africa and um, I, you know, I was like a Bon Eric there. As a matter of fact, I used the name. I, they, I didn't want to, I didn't care, but they used that name. And uh, I was as well over and I was making more money in South Africa and the, the rand to the dollar was a lot less. Yeah, and, and if I can add something too, Nick, uh, you gotta you gotta understand uh, just to put things in perspective. In in May of 1984, when Terry won the NWA World Title at Texas Stadium, right. there was like forty over forty three thousand people who paid to go to that event. And then in 1987, uh, three years later. Uh, not even seven thousand people went, and and so there was a decline in in the uh, in the territory. Uh, but you know, a lot of a lot of stuff happened. You know, uh, Gino Hernandez died. Uh, Mike Von Erich died. Uh, Kerry had his motorcycle accident, and uh, you know, a lot of tragedy happened. You know, and even to uh, in February of '84, David died. So there's a lot of people that were. I believe heartbroken, you know, uh, at that uh, 1987 uh, parade of champions where only 7,000 people, I think a lot of people were heartbroken and, and they didn't want to, they were kind of done with the, the, the promotion in that aspect, you know, because again, you know, a lot of tragedy occurred. And, and Lance, when you step into this role here, you know, it's been talked about how a lot of fans kind of picked up that you weren't, you know, bloodline Von Eric and there was some blowback. Did you feel like pressure on you or heat on you because of these crowds are going down or because you were in that spot? I mean, did that wear on you at all in any way? Well, I, well, not really, because it wasn't my it wasn't because of me. You yeah. know, it would be I'll tell you, the problem was that Fritz didn't want to go. And, you know, uh, he could, the, the Von Erics could have been what um McMahon is today you know if they had had a little more uh not they because i think that it was mostly fritz he was okay with familiarity he didn't want to venture out any further than where he was you know we did some i remember we did some shots and uh you know that was where we went to the east coast we went up to uh um to uh, uh philadelphia once we went up to uh uh well, New York, um, we went to a couple of places up north and uh, we pulled really big houses, but he just didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to, he, he didn't want to leave the FW area. Hmm. And it's a shame because he could have made everyone a lot of money and we would have been where, you know, where WWF is today. Man, that is wild to think about, man. Uh, and so like, but in this period, I brought up, you know, you did get to wrestle Ric Flair for the world title in 85. Like, you know, what was that like for you getting into the ring with like the greatest of the time and, and possibly the greatest ever? Like, what was it like to get to work with Rick? Lane? He, um, actually, of everyone that I wrestled, he was actually the most talented because, you know, I told him I, I wasn't very experienced. He said, you just listen to me. I'll make you look good. You know, and <laughs> yeah. 
early, you know, he, he had that ability. Man. It was great. Do you do do you have any like favorite road stories from your time? Are there like fond memories? I mean, it sounds like it. You know, it was a, not a, a long venture for you, but I mean, you were still pretty high profile, and you got to ride the road. Did you ever go out and you know have some drinks with Nature Boy, or do you have any fond memories from from being just one of the boys at that time? You know, it was funny because uh, several times I was on the card with him, and we'd go out and party all night long. And he could actually go into the gym the next day after being. You know, I went. I went home one, two o'clock in the morning. This guy stayed out till five, six in the morning. He was back at the gym, you know, at, at eight o'clock, you know, at eight o'clock in the morning and was able to work out. I don't know how he did it. Yeah. He, uh, he was an amazing guy. Um, you, you have to read the book. There's a lot of stories I could tell you, but yeah, I don't I say, you know, I'm just trying to pick some stuff out here to tease everybody because yeah, you definitely go more in depth in the book about all these different little stories. Well, the problem is that, you know, I don't know what I can say on the, you know, I mean, to the audience that you have, because some of it's actually pretty uh, uh, graphic. You know, I, you know, in the book, the, the reason the book, the book's about wrestling, but it's not, too. You know, it's about WWF, and, I mean, uh, sorry, WCCW and, uh, you know, my time there. But it was also I was on a train that got bombed. I was on a plane that got hijacked. I, you know, I rode a bicycle for uh, from uh from zimbabwe all the way to the congo and it's just some interesting stories and it wouldn't have happened if i hadn't had the wrestling you know or i hadn't been a wrestler you you almost got bought you were bombed on a train i mean i mean i don't want to pick everything out here but do you want to give us a little bit of what happened here at lance i'm very interested i don't hear that come up every day in a conversation i have yeah uh I'm gonna let you read the book, but uh, we were on a train that was traveling on the day that, uh, uh, and this is where I learned not to actually, you know, like 9-11, you know, you don't want to travel on those dates in other countries anyway, of uh, dates, uh, anniversary dates of a tragedy. Um, uh, what had happened that um, some Sikhs, which are Indians had actually built uh, their temple on top of a uh, mosque and uh, they had had a they blew up the mosque and you know uh, on the date that we had traveled and there was I don't know six or eight I can't really remember but there was a, a few bombings throughout the uh, throughout India and we happened to be on one of the trains that got blown up but we were lucky because they blew up the uh, the uh we were in first class and they bombed the uh the mail part of the train so when we looked out you know the post and when we looked out of the we were in a siding for 14 hours and when we uh we'd actually uh watched all the letters fly out and people kind of on the side they didn't know but i don't think anybody in our section you know our the first part of the train or the the, the better part of the train the first class i don't think anybody was hurt but it was it was kind of an interesting, you know, uh, that was an interesting day. That sounds, yeah. That sounds like an interesting day, Lance. Yeah. And the great thing is for the two weeks that we were in India, the first time we were actually traveling around and we had all these uh, bodyguards and they would tell us when we were on the bus, you need to actually not stick your head out the bus and or anything. And we found out later on that, you know, we had a, a fatwa against us, uh, like uh, they were going to, you know, they wanted to kill uh, the wrestlers. And I didn't, we didn't find out about that until one night when they were talking and we were like, holy crap. Why, why did they want, just because you guys were coming in un, uninvited? Is that kind of the, the reason why, or I don't know. I just think that they, they just thought that these are foreigners and you know, they're coming into, we're going up north into, uh, towards Punjabi and there's a lot of Muslims in that area. And, you know, I just think that they thought, well, why does anybody target someone you know that's a foreigner they, yeah they, it was know. it was out of retaliation of the 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 mosque incident but they since they were high profile they were they were kind of targeted in that aspect so it's very interesting and you know those are some of the stories that you're going to get that you know a lot of people see the the cover of the book and they don't expect it to be in depth of, in depth as it is you know yeah, totally. Well, hey, you know what? That's a that's a great tease, Lance, and I, I I don't want you to have to give away all your stories. So I'll just say I'll say to you, Vinny, uh, you know, where can people go find this book right now? Where do you want people to go to order it? 
engage it, read it, all those great things. Where do you want people to, to get yeah. Right now, you can get the book at lancebychance.com, and that is where you can order. You can get a signed copy as well. And we're working on, uh, we're in the process of uh, getting the book uh, available for people overseas as well. But right now at lancebychance.com. And uh, what I like about the book is, uh, you know, it, 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 it tells the story of how he's discovered, you know, how he, how he got into to bodybuilding in the first place, you know, and then uh, his time up in Portland, his time here in Dallas. And then a lot of people think his time in wrestling was over uh, when he left Dallas, but, you know, he had the, the longest part of his career overseas and you'll find stories like the, the Indian train bombing. There's uh, stories uh, that involve uh, guns and auto parts. And uh, there's uh, stories that involve the, uh, the 800 mile bike ride that he talks about. And it's very interesting to, uh, to uh, hear some of these stories. And a lot of people, again, uh, they're really surprised when they read the book, it's full of detail. It's uh, it's a story that n has never been told, and I think a lot of people in the wrestling, uh, you know, fans and people in the business are really going to be surprised, uh, really, uh, how the story unfolds. Awesome. Uh, well, that was a great sell. And Lance, anything from you? Is there anything you want to uh, plug or promote while we have a moment with you to, to let the fans know out there? Yeah, I sell auto parts. If you want to buy auto, no, I'm kidding. I was about to say that was a real left turn there, man. I wasn't expecting that. So. Yeah, one eight hundred auto parts. No, uh, uh, you know it's funny because um, Vinny, I didn't want to read the book, you know, because some of the the memories, my memories with world class, a lot of them I've forgotten. He had to actually fact check a lot of stuff because I wasn't number one that time in my life. Like all of us, we were doing a lot of. Uh, you know, party and then doing things that they probably don't do today. Uh, well, maybe they'd still do, but uh, we partied hardy. And so, um, you know, the, the, I didn't want to read the book. We kept that, Vinny kept asking me questions about the book and, you know, I would answer it. It's kind of like, you know, it, 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 you know, I'd answer him. He said, did you read that part? And I'm like, yeah. And he said, well, it doesn't sound like it. And so I sat down and read the book from start to finish. And funny enough, I, I didn't think I'd get through it in a short period of time because, you know, I, I figured it'd take me four or five days, but I read it from start to finish. And I couldn't believe how well he had done the book. He actually had done a, a very good job. And I it turned out very different than what I thought, you know, because week after week after week, um, we'd be on the phone for an hour or two hours uh, you know, a day and it, I mean, a, 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 not a day, but you know, one day a week and sure. you don't really understand whenever you're, I guess you'd call it ghost writing because he's doing the writing. I'm just telling my story and you really don't understand how, cause you remember stuff along the way and you throw it in there and you know, for him, first of all, to make sense out of everything. And second of all, he had to go ask, other people to make sure that I was telling, you know, the right story, not because I was, he thought I was lying, I guess, but because, you know, it's, 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 you just, you know, it's a lot of information that you have to give somebody and you, you know, you remember stuff along the way. Matter of fact, that book could have been three times the, it, finally, Vinny said, listen, I don't want any more. You know, because I kept remembering things that would have been interesting, but he says, I can't do it. I, I've got enough, please. You know, so I didn't hear from Vinny, right, Vinny, about uh, five or four, three months or four months while you put yeah, it was Yeah, it was a while. I just kind of, I started writing and, and just kind of, but yeah, there, there was a lot of information and it got to the point where, um, yeah, I mean, I, I had to kind of contain the story. You know what I'm saying, Nick? And yeah, uh, Totally, totally. So it, it got to the point where it's like, you know what? I think I think we're good with this. I didn't want to. I didn't want a story that was going to be a snooze fest. I wanted something that that people could read. I wanted people something that people would find interesting. And I really think we achieved that. I, I gave the book to uh, several people who are not wrestling fans uh, to help me kind of you know with the story and give me some feedback. And they love the book. They 
they were really surprised that they finished. I had one guy that said, I'll read three, three chapters and I doubt I can get through that, but I'll try. And then the next day he called me up and said, give me the rest of the book. So that, that gives you an idea of, I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. Uh, you don't have to be a wrestling fan. It's a good story. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised, um, you know, in many, in many reasons after they read the book. You know, I think a lot of people thought that Lance was going to come out and, and talk, talk bad about the Von Erich family. And, and he doesn't do that. You know, it's, uh, it's a very uh, respectful story. It's told very well. There's a lot of twists and turns, and there's a lot of stuff in the book that people are going to be really surprised by. Well, I'll close by saying, Lance, first of all, I'm so happy to hear you happy, right? Because I think Vinny made a great point that considering what people have seen in Dark Side of the Ring and know about your story, I think it would be easy for a lot of people to chalk it up as a bad experience, and you would have some bad feelings. That's not the case. And even the letter from Kevin that we started off talking about seemingly wanting to kind of, you know, at least let you know that he appreciated what you did is great. And and so with that, I mean, are you done with pro wrestling, Lance? I mean, the Von Erics are in MLW, Ross and Marshall in there, you know, Kevin, their dad is mentoring. I mean, even, at, and I'm not saying you need to get it and bump around, but do you have any interest in maybe doing one more thing with pro wrestling before it's all said and done? Nope. I did my thing when, you know, and I'm, I'm done. If I was to ever do anything, it'd be in South Africa because, you know, uh, just as big in South Africa and actually bigger because I did movies over there and a lot of things. So, you know, for me, my, uh, stardom lies over there and my, you know, my heart's over there. So for me, I have no desire to, I don't even know, you know, if I have a, I want to spend any more time in the States other than on holiday for a couple of weeks. I don't think I'll ever live there again. You don't need to travel. We'll send, we'll send Ross and Marshall and Kevin. We'll send them down to you. You guys can set up a ring. The macaws can, can, you know, surround the ring, bring the, bring the circus to you, my friend, you know, well, the weather's horrible here because it's a hundred degrees. So I'm sweating right now. Okay. Well, I'll let you go. Lance, thank you very much for the time. Vincent, thank you very much for the time. Everybody go buy the book right now. Lance by chance. And hopefully we'll catch up with you guys down the road. Thank <laughs> you.